Hello everyone and welcome to another PES 2019 day one video as promised and as always for the past three or so years uh, we're going to take a look at edit mode in PES 2019 now as you probably know and probably expected um, not many things have changed regarding edit mode uh, sure we uh, will have a few new stadiums in uh, this year's game uh, licensed of course but there's also a new generic stadium, I don't know if you noticed this, I'm not even sure why I'm starting with stadiums, but anyway, this is going to be a pretty random video. Oh, it's right here at the bottom, Estadio del Taro. So, it's a new generic stadium, good, it's good that we have another one, but only one? I'm waiting for that day they will add countless generic stadiums even have them sorted by size you know capacity but hey i think this is as the name suggests a south american style stadium and already i've seen on some forums um saying uh, that this looks like a colombian stadium i don't recall which one but it seems it has drawn inspiration from real life as all the other generic stadiums have so you know a good addition but only one stadium I want to see more uh, fortunately like I said this year we will see more licensed stadiums uh, which is great but other than that pretty much is the same uh, I do like a change that they've done so right here at the bottom if you remember until now you had an option called data management and from there you had the import export save and load options it was useless to have those three options as a sub menu so I'm glad to see that they got rid of it and just thrown them in the main edit menu as you can see so you have import export where you can import and export teams competitions and uh, images of course you then have save to save all your edits or load to load the edit file you currently have placed in your PESTO 19 folder so all these options are now right in here in size which is great uh, it was kind of annoying to have to save some edits uh, for instance when I'm editing say I don't know 10 teams in a row I might stop after four teams and save the game just in case you know power loss or whatever you really don't want to lose that progress and I had to come back to this menu go all the way down go into the data manage menu and save now I can just go here and as I said the menus are much more faster in this uh, this year I don't know if you notice this but navigating through the menus they load very quickly you can return very quickly which is great I'm not sure why they haven't done this until now but here we go at least uh, it's now much easier to navigate at least for the fact that they haven't changed the design and the look of the menus so we, we get something good out of all of this so um, Transfer still pretty much the same. You just choose the team and then choose the players to remove or move to a new uh, team. <sighs> Fortunately, I don't have to do this anymore. I mostly have to do transfers manually during the summer after the game stops being online supported and they stop releasing, you know, uh, live updates. And as I said in one of my previous videos today, they actually released a um, live update as soon as the servers went up this morning and they updated well every squad that I've encountered until now um, has been fixed and updated and everything is as it, as it should be national team selection again pretty much the same thing just choose the national team and um, you know add player remove players stuff like that oh by the way in Europe we have a few more well, not licensed uh, in a sense that they don't have the kit license, but teams with real players that weren't here before. For instance, um, let's see, Bosnia is still unlicensed and with fake players, but Bulgaria, although unlicensed, so see here, they don't have the kits and stuff, but the players are all real. Look at this, we have a player from the Turkish League, the Russian League, again Spartak Moscow, 
lots of players in the Russian league. So yeah, these are all, and as you can see by the names, they're all real players. And Bulgaria was one of the teams with fake players, so I'm not sure why this has changed only this year, since they've been members of 5th Pro for quite a while, I'm really not sure, but it's good to have the players because it was just so frustrating to go through the squad list and um, compare either by age, height or over rating you know comparing to past versions to find the real players to replace them or in some cases you didn't even have the real play, uh, player uh, assigned at the club to replace them they were only the national team so you had to edit the name manually and all that stuff it was tedious so it's good to see a few more teams with real players now Czech Republic I think is actually still licensed yeah um but uh, Hungary they now have real players as well they they didn't have real players um, Israel as well finally they have real players I think we look we have one at Olympiakos that's not chose moved uh, this summer actually Israel had fake players until now so good to see that uh, what else Norway I, th I think Norway had fake players as well don't quote me on this but I think they had fake players so very nice to have real names in here finally uh, Poland actually was licensed and I think they're still licensed yes they are uh, Portugal was licensed Romania with real uh, player names again up until this year they uh, didn't have real players Russia as well and Russia is actually fully licensed this year as you can see by the kits good stuff so maybe it has something to do with the Russian league I'm not sure but this year they got the Russia League and the Russia national team fully licensed and until now not only they were unlicensed they also had fake player names um, Scotland I don't think they are licensed they are unlicensed but they have real players just like until now uh, I think only Bosnia and Serbia are the national teams left in Europe with fake players uh, we have Slovakia here Slovenia real players Spain of course Sweden uh, which is not licensed for some reason they were licensed until this year but at least they have real player names uh, Switzerland Turkey which is licensed uh, Ukraine which is licensed and Wales I think they're still licensed too yeah that's it uh, pretty much the same my biggest surprise was with those four European teams um, other than that player edit modes is still um, pretty much the same as you know you've got your basic settings player names appearance same haircuts same lip styles nose styles foreheads eyebrows and all that not nothing changed um, either they are waiting to move to a new engine and probably have an even more in-depth editor in one of my PES wishlist videos I think it was 2016, I, do, I really don't remember, but I, I said that I would love if at some point we would see in PES uh, the style of player editor slash creator like you see in RPGs. It's so detailed, you know, facial features and, you know, in-depth RPGs offer some really, really great um, character creations, creators. So just to show you, same color styles, same designs that have been in the game for over 10 years I think I I mean I remember there were some new uh, designs added in time but like in increments uh, because I remember most of these from PES 2008 <laughs> um, but oh by the way at, at first I really wasn't sure with this new kit style look they they have kind of like a shiny look to them I wasn't sure about it but I'm kind of grown on me I'm, I'm starting to like it actually um, you know even in real life most of the or if not all of the kits are made of like synthetic fabrics which reflect light so they kind of look like this most of the time so yeah that has grown on me um, captain armbands same stuff that you would usually see fonts unfortunately once again the, the same I think how well, many 10 12 fonts they really have to update these I mean these are really outdated and 
you know, thankfully on PC we can use CPKs in which you can implement like the real fonts and those are great. Uh, but if you're stuck with the in-game fonts, that kind of sucks. One thing that I noticed in uh, PES 2019 uh, and I appreciate it beside the fact that, for example, all the, the leagues are uh, ordered alphabetically, all the teams you can find out easily from A to Z. But I noticed that by default they have selected uh, generic stadiums that look very similar to the real life stadium. So, you know, they're very close in the way they look. And I noticed, you know, you have the usual uh, uh, team, um, sorry, stadium name by team to edit and have uh, the same stadium maybe used by 10 teams. but you can use the actual name of the stadium for every team you have the select image as you have and detail settings same things where uh, you can uh, choose the turf pattern the silent color sea color and that stuff goal, uh, goal style you know this same four options only two goal patterns uh, at least now instead of numbered them you have green black and white i'm not sure why they were still numbered when obviously they were solid different colors and you have the usual designs like stripes circles and stuff but for the first time you aren't stuck to using the team colors you know you would usually pick something like this you know a model like that you would uh, have the net colors in the colors of the team club because the team club colors are also two in number so now i like that you can actually fully customize the colors as you can see it's very nice and very useful for customizing stadiums at least if we don't have stadium creator i'm glad to see changes like this uh, to add some variety to the game oh and back to player editor for a bit i just remembered you actually have some new player celebrations not too many there are still the same ones that have been until now but i think i spotted about five new ones let's see so this one i didn't see until now in edit mode i think this one as well Yeah, this has been already. So I think that that's it. Yeah. Uh, so you might have spotted them as well. Uh, about five, six new player celebrations. So not many things changed or added in edit mode. Uh, but again, I do like the fact that we can now fully customize the colors of the uh, nets. I do like that we have four new European national teams with real player names uh, but other than that there are still lots of things that have to be changed I mean don't even keep these old ones just completely remove them and add many new options uh, for fonts like I said those really are outdated uh, even kit designs just I don't know we, we need new things in edit mode because Edit mode is a big part of PES, has always been, and with all these licensing issues, I think it will remain a big part of PES. And I do enjoy editing PES, although, you know, just loading an option file and having everything ready is obviously the uh, choice to go for. But I also like editing myself, editing kits, stuff like that. Uh, so I would like to see some new features, and most importantly, a uh, more detailed player creator I think would be absolutely fantastic 
and there have been rumors of them moving to a new engine for PES 2020 or maybe 2021 depending on when the new console generation will be launched and stuff like that I don't know um, but yeah what we have right now is pretty outdated and uh, unfortunately well that's what we will we, we'll use what we have and work with what we what we have uh, but once again we'll have to trust our very talented modding community to make the best of the missing teams and leagues or the leagues that we want to add in uh, in the game but that has been it for my video as always kind of a tradition uh, when the game launches to take a look at uh, the edit mode and try and spot some new things and hope to see some new things as always but uh, that has been it for this video i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you found it useful in case you haven't bought the game yet and maybe wanted to see the edit modes a little bit better uh, whichever is the case, I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.